We begin tonight with breaking news embattled Maryland State Senator Nathaniel Oaks is resigning. The move comes as he faces federal corruption charges. WJZ is live in Annapolis. George Solis was in a legislative session this evening and has the latest. George. That's right. Good evening, Nick. Word broke earlier this evening that Oaks would be resigning, though it was unclear when he might do it. Tonight, we got the answer. Is there anything you want to let your constituents or the public know? WJZ catching up with embattled Baltimore Senator Nathaniel Oaks moments after he announced he would be resigning. Your resignation is effective tomorrow at 9, is that correct? We press for comment from the senator who faces federal bribery and obstruction of justice charges, but he would not comment. Do you have anything to say about the allegations against you? Senator, you, you did resign, correct? Oaks making the announcement to the Senate president Wednesday night to declare when he'd formally resign. The president spokesperson speaking on his behalf. Just received a letter effective tomorrow at 9 a.m. Federal prosecutors say Oaks took bribes from an informant posing as an investor. He was also charged with tipping off the target of another investigation. Earlier this year, Oaks was removed from his committee positions in the Senate. In prior interactions with WJZ, Oaks' attorney denying the charges. His attorney could not be reached for comment Wednesday night. Will you be here tomorrow at 9 a.m.? Good night. Now, Oaks is scheduled to appear at a hearing tomorrow morning at U.S. District Court at 11 a.m. Live in Annapolis tonight, George Solis reporting for WJZ. WJZ as a team covering this uh, fast moving storm. George Solis live in a northeast Baltimore neighborhood with a powerful wind and rain that suddenly swept in, caused some serious damage. George. That's right, Vic. Still no word from the National Weather Service whether or not this was a tornado that touched down here, something that many out here speculate. But the aesthetic here is just like what you see behind me several trees that look like they were just plucked from the ground. Amazingly, there have been no injuries. As you make the turn onto Chesley Avenue, the trail of downed trees has some in the neighborhood wondering if this was more than just another summer storm. You could literally see it, what looked like a tornado, like went right up the street and just like literally ripped all the trees out of the ground. No official word yet from the National Weather Service on just what kind of system tore through here. As far as people like Carol and Dallas are concerned, it's just a miracle no one was hurt. Normally my mom be sitting on the porch, so I'm glad she wasn't out there. Her front yard buried in branches. Up the road, a giant tree right in the middle of the road, and it only gets worse from there. After several days of rain, some trees can no longer absorb any more moisture. This is a good example of that. This tree completely uprooted here, falling onto this home, taking with it a large chunk of the sidewalk. The Pierce family was home as it happened. It sounded like a freight train went down the street and dropped a bomb as it went by. WJZ getting a closer look at the tree that amazingly seems to have only damaged a part of the roof. Um, there's some water inside of my house in the, this corner. Around Baltimore, flooding running rampant. This was Clipper Mill Road. Some storm drains gushing. The Jones Falls also raging. Back on Chesley Avenue, neighbors are coming together for what's bound to be at least a few days worth of cleanup. The lingering question, what was behind all of it? It had to be something else. Just don't see rain just doing this type of damage. Now, work crews have already been out here surveying some of this damage. Neighbors have also been checking on one another just to make sure everyone is all right. Live in Baltimore tonight, George Solis reporting for WJZ. Now, let's go to George Solis live at UNBC where fans are celebrating this big historic win. George. Well, Mary, that's why they call it March Madness after all right now. Do you hear that? That is the sound of brackets being torn across the country, everywhere other than right here at UMBC, where the students tell me they knew this would be the outcome all along despite the odds. And what you're seeing now is video of that celebration that took place here in the common room area, a big party, and what a joy it was to watch this historic moment with the students. The campus, as you said, definitely partying tonight. Retriever Nation standing tall Friday night. I mean, everyone's excited as heck, you know. Making March Madness history. I can barely breathe. Like, I can barely breathe. I, can, I don't have words. Like, I don't have words. I'm so hyped for this right now. League showdown in the South as the University of Maryland Baltimore County men's basketball team took down number one seeded Virginia. A feat that's never been accomplished. Here on campus, the anticipation and excitement growing with every passing second as the retrievers get closer and closer to making history. But I never thought that.
thought it would be like this. Yeah, they're going to be surprised. We're so pumped. Pumped, especially as a team scored buckets at buckets of three. Fans also understand it, and they don't. You can see that they're a little anxious. As you can see, they're missing some free shots. Even students not crazy about sports coming out to watch the Cinderella story. I thought we had a chance, but I never thought that it would be like this. I thought it would be completely the other way around. But no matter how stacked the deck was against them, loyal fans early on declaring victory, and with good reason. <laughs> We're doing a parade around campus right after this, <laughs> after we win this. Certainly a lot of excitement around here tonight. Now, Governor Larry Hogan likely very pleased as well as he not only had UMBC advancing, but taking the whole tournament. And after tonight's performance, who's to say the Retrievers won't? Live at UMBC tonight, George Solis reporting for WJZ. George, thank you so much. Baltimore billboard backlash. It's a story that is definitely making people talk tonight. Yes, animal rights group PETA has put up an ad in the city encouraging people to stop eating crabs. I know, it's a little crazy sounding, right? WJZ is live. George Solis getting both sides to weigh in a story that has everybody talking. George? Yeah, no question that this billboard is a bold move here in crab country. PETA asking Baltimoreans to give up on their beloved crabs and go vegan. You can ask just about anyone. In Baltimore, crab is king. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. It's yeah. part of the city's history, you know what I mean? And so, what at first glance may appear to be an homage to the city's crustacean turned out to be quite the opposite. Well, people got... Let's say crabby. Without the uh, seafood, there's no Baltimore. Just the sea section sign would really annoy me. Technically, it's a billboard. It's on the corner of East Baltimore Street near several seafood restaurants. This message on it from animal rights group PETA. I'm meat, not meat. See the individual. Go vegan. Online, Baltimoreans have been sounding off with tweets like this one. Sorry, PETA. Maryland loves crabs. Safe to say that billboard's not making any friends here in Baltimore, especially with a guy that owns a business right below it. I don't have nothing to do with this. I sell Maryland crab meat. Silver Moon 2 owner Nick People Lentis says now that the billboard has gone viral, it's been a nightmare for his business. I think they have to remove it. PETA says they plan to keep it up ahead of the city's seafood fest next month. They are individuals. Uh, they can feel pain. Uh, they can, uh, you know, sense the world around them, and they definitely do not want to be boiled alive. I don't think they knew what they were getting themselves into. Be that as it may, business owners like John Minidakis of Jimmy's Famous Seafood says it's going to be a tough argument to win in crab country. If, uh, you know, the community sees that there's an attack on Baltimore happening, I can definitely see them getting behind places like this and showing their support. And while this billboard is unique to Baltimore, PETA says they do have similar ones along the East Coast. The city, by the way, in the middle of Vegan Restaurant Week. Live in downtown Baltimore tonight, George Solis reporting for WJZ. Five-year-old hero, an Aberdeen boy, is being credited with saving his mother and unborn siblings' lives after his mother suddenly became ill. George Solis sits down exclusively with the family, talks about the incident and the person on the other end of the 911 call who helped the boy deal with it. There are a number of things you can expect from a five-year-old. So I can be Harry Potter. Being full of energy and showing off toys may not surprise you, but how about being labeled a hero? If I had been left there and... He didn't know to call somebody. It, I very well could have died. Matthew Ware was at home with his six-month pregnant mom, Patricia. When out of the blue, she collapsed just outside the kitchen. I don't remember getting there. Her blood sugar had dropped to dangerously low levels. Matthew made a call to his stepdad, who then called 911. When 911 called back, no one answered. Somehow, little Matthew was able to call 911 back. The dispatcher who took his call was exactly the person he needed to hear from. Well, her tummy started turning and then she fell. And she fell. She's not talking to you at all? Yeah, she just kind Hearing the emergency call he made for the first time, Matthew recalled one detail vividly. She told me to unlock the door, but I couldn't. You tried, though. Oh. Yes. That she is Public Safety Dispatcher 3, Maria Beber. Couldn't get the door unlocked. He tried. He really tried, but he, um, he just couldn't do it. Beber staying on the phone as EMS broke down the door to get in. 
probably seen movies where people bang in the door and it's not the good guys. So I did tell them, you know, it's okay, they are the good guys. Patricia says she has very little recollection of the ordeal. What's going on? Uh, I don't know. But what she and everyone else seems to know is that her son is a genuine hero. Even if he's too modest to admit it. Man, I flag, I don't do that. He was the type of caller you just wanted to, at the end of the call, reach through and give him a little hug. You know, he did a great job. And you can bet he's been getting plenty of them. Thank you so much, buddy. A reunion between all parties, hopefully in the works. Matthew very likely to receive special commendation for his heroic actions. In Hartford County, George Solis reporting for WJZ. Now, Patricia, now aware of her medical condition, is taking medication to prevent another scare. Her baby is due in March. Adorable. Bang, bang, so bang, 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 bang. So exciting for a little boy to see that. <laughs> yeah.